If an Australian farmer had 800 of their sheep die in one day through heat stress, they would go to jail, wouldn't they? Oh, I don't know, but it's 800 is a lot. And obviously it's, it's, it's a significant animal welfare event. And, and for that, we're obviously not, we don't condone it. And you know, we needed to get to the bottom of that. And, and what are you doing about it? Because one sheep, mm. less than every two minutes, and you have one vet on board. How can those animals possibly be euthanized humanely? It's a tragic event and absolutely, I'm not trying to put, words probably can't describe it effectively. So in a way saying less is probably better in respect, in respect to your response. But it's 12 months before that, another shipment at the same time, August 2016, 3,000 sheep die. Another tragic event. Correct. It just so happens what we have one or two tragic events every year and that's just the nature of the industry. We shrug, shrug our shoulders. No, we're not shrugging our shoulders. I mean, the nature of the industry is that the average mortality rates on board the, the vessels that leave Australia and go to the Middle East over the past 20 to 25 years have dropped. And they've dropped quite significantly. They're now plateaued. So we need to do more as an industry to take it to the next level. And part of that will be having less sheep on board vessels, particularly at the most hottest time of year, what they call the Northern summer. It also means having heat management plans, which are absolutely, you know, to the letter have to be met. But, but, but why haven't you got them now? Well, they do have them now. And then there's-, there's well, But, but not, they're not enough, are they? Because we've uh, just gone through the death toll. Correct. On those two vessels, absolutely. And they were hit by severe weather, weather events. But, but you see, your industry knows this. In just over a month's time, those voyages to the heat of the Middle East in summer will begin again, Simon. They will. They'll begin again. They will. With so you are ways. sending them off into a foreseeable heat wave. And there's heat management plans and arrangements that have to be put in place in order to ensure that the tray can operate consistently around the clock, 365 days a year to meet the particular export market that, that, that we supply sheep into, which they also come these in. These pictures, yeah. these pictures show that those management plans don't work. The management plans on the whole do work. Those pictures show that, that in those occasions they certainly did not. So despite the evidence in front of you, you still maintain you have high standards, although in those cases, in those five voyages oh, in no. seven months, it just so happens that none of the standards were met. I'm not going to walk away from the footage that was seen there. It's 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 poor to look at. It's it's you know we we, we do want to actually actually seek to address this. We've just put in a submission to the Commonwealth government, to the regulator as well as to the government to say we think standards should be improved. It's nothing to do with this discussion we're having today. We've been working on well, this well, for the but, past but six is, or twelve months. But it is, you see, because you know very well, intimately, that other people have tried to raise those standards since 2003 and the industry, your industry, has actively opposed raising those standards. Ooh, so how can you sit in front of me today and say, we are trying to improve the standards? Ooh. What, 15 years late? No, that's not correct. We've actually put a lot of a lot of improvements in places in the industry sector over the last 10, 15 years. Should we go through the timeline? Of course. Of when standards were requested to be improved and your industry resisted it? Do we start with 2003, the Kennery Review? Then we moved to the Farmer Review of 2011, which led to the Government Review, which suggested different standards again. And they were put in place. In and your industry, your industry took them to court. Your industry took Aquis to court in 2008 that's, that's to resist stocking densities. That's another standard, mm. Simon. You're sitting here telling me that you want better standards? We do want better, we do want better standards. But after the farm gate's been shut, and thousands of sheep are dead. No, we do want better standards. I mean, the average farm gate would have, would have a mortality rate of around 2%, 2 to 2.5%. 2 We're talking about some of these vessels which have percentages higher than that. Absolutely, completely agree what you're saying. But you've also got to look at it from the other perspective as well, is Australia's got high standards which we've put in place. They're not always been met. But are you trying to compare farm gate percentages across a year with a percentage of mortality from one of these voyages from two to no, three again, weeks. I'm just, I'm just speaking about the facts. Well, I'm not here to be argumentative at all. What I'm here to say is well, that- I want you to tell the truth, Never mind about the argumentation. <laughs> well, I am telling the truth and the truth is this. Well, the footage that we saw before is unacceptable. The footage we saw before is not beholden of the, the industry that we actually are. The footage we saw before, if there are breaches, they need to be addressed. So it's an aberration. With respect to the current standards that the industry needs to meet, the vast majority of vessels, the vast majority of planes, 
absolutely come in well below what the what the standard is. The standard. You, you, you keep saying is. this. You keep you keep going back to this exception, not the rule argument. Sixty Minutes has been doing stories on this since two thousand and three. Two thousand and three, Simon. Two thousand and five, we did another one, another horror patch. Two thousand and six, another horror patch. Here we are, eight, nine, ten years later, still talking about your so-called aberration. I'm not saying it's aberration. That wasn't the words I used. It wasn't the words I used at all. The footage we saw today is poor. The footage we saw today does not meet the standards, not just the standards that are set by the regulator. We are not the regulator. We, we are part of the industry. And the standards don't, I believe, are acceptable for us, for Australian producers, for those other exporters that do the right thing. We absolutely, completely agree with that. There is, there is a broader picture here. There is also a broader picture here. And I'm just, all I was saying was articulating the fact there is a broader picture here where the vast majority of journeys are well below what the standard has been set by the Commonwealth regulator.